In this recording, we'll learn how to model this ring using Rhino Ceras, Rhino, and um, then we'll go in Modo to do a very quick render using a anodized preset. There's nothing complicated here. So, as you know, Rhino is here and Modo is here. So I'll start in Rhino. So basically, uh, I made this ring a long time ago. So it might not look exactly the same, but I'll try my best. And uh, so the way I'm going to build this ring, it's by using this, actually this profile that I will uh, uh, then flow in 3D and then um, do a, a sweep to an extrusion with two curves. So anyway, before I scare you, uh, let's do everything, everything from scratch. So let's say I have a fresh Rhino. Uh, we'll go in the front view and usually, as I'm sure you know, at size 9 for a ring for a man, it's around 17.5 mil, the outside. So I could type circle, center of the, of the circle 0, enter. We call hold shift to be straight, uh, orthogonal. But here we could make sure we're in diameter. Uh, not radius, so diameter, and we could type 17.5, and by default we're in mil. Voila. So, if I'm curious to know the size, I can go dim, diameter, and I could double check. We don't have to do this, it's just to, uh, if you were doing a blueprint, that could be useful. But no, we know the measurement is correct. So now, I want to unroll, kind of, not unroll, but kind of measure the perimeter, the circumference. So when you have a line, you can type length, but this is a closed line. So I'm going to select it and type circumference. Oh, actually, I think I could do the length too. Let's try that. Yes. So actually, length also works here. So 54.978. Let me write this down because we really have to be precise. Here we go. So now what I can do on the top view, so looking down, I'll just draw a line like this, anywhere, doesn't matter. And I'll type 54.978, like this. Hold Shift to be straight and click. So now this line equal the circle unrolled, unfolded. You see, if we were to roll this, it will become the circle. This is very useful in jewelry. So let me show what I'll do with this. Now, I'll make a rectangle, REC, center, and I'll find the midpoint. So you need to make sure that your O snap in mid is turned on. And somewhere here, you should see uh, halfway through. Here, mid. So you click here, and then you have, and you want to finish just here. So we could hover and drag. And it's what they call smart track. Voila. So now I'm going to keep this. You'll see why in a second. But what I really want to work with is this. Okay? So we're going to explode it, because right now it's one rectangle. So if you explode it, they all become curved. And we don't really need this one, by the way. We could get rid of this. And now I can select this one and this one, and I can rebuild to add more line. 16 might be a hair too much. Let's try 8. I frankly don't remember what I use, so let's try 12. And now, look, I could select those two and maybe scale them out to do that big uh, bungee and those one maybe uh, go in a little bit. So I'm holding shift. Oops, select both and hold shift. So those one can go inward a little bit. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, so now we, there's a command called flow, and we can flow those two curves 
and now base curve is this and the target is this because those one as you agree are the same one is roll one is unrolled but they are the same length so I could type flow so flow means deform along curve and flow along surface deform along a surface so we're gonna go with flow along curve what do you want to flow this one and this one enter the base curve click here and the target curve so you see now they are flowed so now I don't need this I can get rid of this and I don't need this so to create the, the piece in the middle we could have multiple huh? I could have a let's say a li ellipse here and I could have a different one here but we're gonna do just one I'm gonna use quadrant what quadrant here it means every 45 degree so ellipse I'll go here I think the one I was using is the second one the ellipse let me think yeah diameter so here I make sure to hit the quadrant here to hit the quadrant you see and draw it and if it's the wrong way it's fine you can rotate it but actually here it's doing a pretty good job uh, go slow you can press alt so it doesn't snap but I think if you just go slow it should be alright yeah like this so now we could use a tool called sweep 2 it's like uh, an extrusion along two rail so the first rail is this one second rail and then the profile enter or right click enter again and you should have this say okay is there a close here no sometimes you have close sweep so sometimes you have to do it in two times so sweep again first rail second rail and the, oh sorry let me redo it surf edge that's what you want voila and to make them one you select both piece and you go ctrl j to join them as you know we can rotate this uh, this way so it's more like in the video you saw and uh, to bring this to rhino to model mesh uh, here we'll go hair higher because I, I won't press tab using this and now you can delete this you can we don't need any of this it usually does a better job than that but it's okay we could rebuild it in modo too um, and now we can just save as make sure it's rhino version 5 uh, and call it flow I'll call it flow 2 save and then open model so file open flow 2 and if it looks weird you go shift a it's because it's tiny you see it's 2 mil so sometimes for rendering I would just scale it way more I would go in polygon press R and scale it like way more it'll just make your life easier after Q to drop so once again if you're new to model all to orbit all shift to pan and scroll you can also use this here it does the same thing okay um, so the ring is actually here you could unparent it and delete the group and call this ring to give it its own material you select it you press M and you call it ring to create a floor you right click primitive plane W move it down like this and we'll go in polygon scale it and we'll scale it way bigger something like that voila uh, what else can we do we could create a, a light a default light but here I think the easiest will be to go F6 to use our presets and I think I was using a metal aluminium anodized I think it was this one so drag and drop and for the lighting 
I really don't remember, but it would be, uh, I think, a studio light, uh, uh, the same as SolidWorks, maybe this one. Double click. So now when we press F8, we should have a decent lighting. So here the shadow is not nice, it's because of that directional light. So we could uh, delete this one. This, actually, this lighting is enough, but we could go item, create light, and bring uh, an area light to get a very soft light. And if you do this, um, you need to uh, rotate it. Make sure the arrow is pointing the right way and move it up. But you don't have to. We could uh, do a very good job without this. Especially if it's for a quick uh, render. Okay, um, I usually color my lights a little bit, but uh, if the light is too strong, the intensity is here, so you can go 2.5. And the environment lighting is actually under shading, environment, environment. This is the intensity, maybe I'll go down a little bit, 0.8. And if you want that highlight to be elsewhere, you would go here. Select the image, go under texture, and you just play with the rotation on Y. That will turn where the light is. So maybe 45 degree. You see it changed the highlight. Uh, maybe 90. Actually, the default was not too bad. Voila. And what else can we do? Um, we could do a vignette to uh, darken this a little bit. I'm just moving down the hair. Voilà. So the vignette is on the render. Um, final color output, vignette. So in uh, jewelry I go pretty high, like 250, and it darkens those edges. A bloom, that will be at the end when we do the final render, it will make this glow. We might need this. And this is a bit too saturated, so we could go um, tone map, maybe 20 or 30, to just cool down a little bit. Uh, we could do depth of field, there's much more. But for now, to do the final, it's F9, or you can go also render F9. And that might take a few seconds. So this is full res. So there's a bit of noise, it's not perfect, but um, I'll show you the bloom and then I'll show you where to get rid of the noise. So this is your number of uh, core. So depending, this is a laptop, but depending on how many processor you have, Voila, so you see with Bloom, we can see here the glow. If you want more, you go down. So now AD, I'm getting more Bloom. Yeah, that's about right, maybe 90. And the uh, radius, it's how wide is the... And make sure this should be, if you have to change it, sRGB. Now, if we need a better quality image, uh, render, we can here change to inches, that means 300 dpi change that and we can go here and we could bring this to 16. If you use depth of field you would go even higher. Uh, shading rate uh, that would slow down a lot but you could go 0.2 that would remove a lot of noise. Uh, the reflection on the floor 64 is not enough sample so we could go 256 or more. Same for the shadow those one are quite important and re-render it. Uh, So as you can tell now, it's much nicer, the noise is gone, and uh, yeah, so this is how I did this uh, years ago. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.